Right, mini enthusiast, next job inside the boot. Um, so it wasn't that bad. There are a few areas down here that are rusty where in the spare wheel well where water sat, and there's a few areas that, yeah, just very, very light surface rust. It's just where the paint is so thin in the boot. Uh, literally, I was just rubbing us off with a Scotch Bright pad, and the paint just comes straight off. So I'm not going to film all of this because it's uh, quite difficult to film inside the boot while you're spraying and that sort of thing. So I uh, first job I'm going to do is cure rust any of these areas where there's um, visible sort of surface rust down the bottom here. We're going to tiger seal, reseal up the bungs. Um, and then I'll be back in a moment. We'll then etch prime it, primer, base and top coat. Um, I've probably spent... 40 minutes cleaning up this boot. I could spend hours. It's a horrible job crawling inside there trying to clean it up. Um, but at the end of the day, again, you won't see most of that. It's like the engine bay. Spent a lot of time prepping the engine bay. Once you put the engine in, you don't see it. So again, once you put the tank in, the spare wheel, the battery, boot floor, uh, carpet, <laughs> you don't see any of it. But it is nice to have it looking good underneath. Uh, I am going to cheat a little bit. I'm not going to do... Uh, in this corner here where the tank goes because it's pretty good condition anyway um, there's no rust there at all and if you look at the subframe mount really good um, so I'm not going to do that just saves a bit of paint saves a bit of time um, and you just never see that bit <laughs> I'll probably wax behind there once I've painted it but really these bits are the visible bits these are the bits I just want to get looking a bit fresher and a bit tidy right so that's the cure rusting done as you can see, anywhere where there was any hint that there might be a little bit of rust there, been wire wheeled back again, and then just treated with cure rust. And I've run out of cure rust. So that was a full bottle when I started on Sprout. I think it was a full bottle anyway. Quarter of a litre of cure rust. <laughs> uh, it's brilliant stuff, that Hammerite cure rust. You can make it yourself. Um, I can't think what chemical it is, but you, you can make it yourself for much cheaper. But it doesn't cost much anyway. I think that bottle's about 12, 15 quid and it's done this whole car. I'm sure it's probably done a little bit more as well. So it neutralizes the rust. It starts out white, it turns purple where the rust gets neutralizes and then it's ready for paint. So I'll probably leave that overnight now to dry off. And then tomorrow um, we will get etch primer on the areas that were bare metal. And then, um, yeah, it's primer, base coat and lacquer. Back in a bit. Right, so we're back on the spraying bit. I do actually enjoy spraying. Um, I hate doing the prep work. This could probably be prepped up a bit better, <laughs> but it's only inside the boot. Uh, so we're on the good old paints for you uh, kits or painting kits. And um, I've already got etch primer on here where there was bare metal. I've re-seam sealed a couple of these holes and I've kind of put the radiator under the floor as well because I can and it warms it up nicely. So let's get some primer on here and then we'll let that dry.
and it was at this point I realised I'd ballsed up. So I've run out of paint. I'm sure I had another can there, but I've clearly not got enough to finish the boot off. That is a real pain because you're meant to put the paint on and then leave it like a maximum of two hours before you put the lacquer on. So, I don't know what to do. Do I lacquer the bits that are done and then I can just rub back, re-key the areas I need to redo, the areas where the prime is still shown, which is only actually the spare wheel well. It's not gonna look right if I leave it grey though, is it? Damn. So there we go, all done. Um, little bit of a schoolboy error, running out of paint, but it's all done now. Um, and again, it's a lovely finish. It's better than it would have been from factory. Um, I've now just got to bolt the battery back in. I'm gonna lay the fuel tank in. I'm not gonna put the fuel tank fully in because obviously the car's got to be resprayed yet so I need to leave the filler neck out um, but let me get the battery in and then we can get it mobile again <laughs> right then so we've got our nice new brand new Halfords battery with our three-year guarantee I know there are better batteries around but I've got a Halfords trade card and they're relatively cheap and it's the right battery for a Mini as well one of my bug binds out fitting the wrong battery in a Mini lots of reasons not to do it um, and the fuel tank is thrown in, literally thrown in, because obviously I don't want to cover, I don't want to put the tank in because this has all got to be rubbed down now ready for paint. So it's thrown in, it's connected up. It's been a few weeks, let's see if it starts. Now all the fuel lines will be dry I'm sure. So I'm going to spring straight into life. Unlock four times, lock four times, unlock, make sure it's in neutral, oh yeah I've got all the covers off as well, uh, inertia switch, we've been here before haven't we? I didn't need a fuel pump prime. That felt okay. It won't crank over if the immobiliser's not disarmed, so. Oh, I can't hear the fuel pump prime in. Why is that then? Why is that? Definitely no fuel pump prime. Oh, what's going on here then? I'll have to do a bit of fault diagnosis and be back with you in a moment. I don't know what's going on there, but the fuel pump wasn't running because it's not earthed. So it's getting alive, it's not getting the earth. So why have I lost the earth? I know I've got loads of earth tags off inside the boot. I'll have to have a look at the wiring diagram and see where the fuel pump gets its earth from. But um, it runs anyway. 